Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, we are here with Danny Reid and we are at the Herefordshire Regimental Museum. Now this is going to be one video. I know I'm in England at the Odyssey show but Danny brought me to this museum because he's a volunteer here and one, you're not a curator. You're I'm the assistant the, curator. Assistant curator. And we're just going to talk through some stuff in this uniform or in this museum because it is some, some fantastic stuff in here. Yes, well welcome all to the Herefordshire Regimental Museum. We cover, basically cover the history of a territorial regiment. The Herefordshire Regiment and Herefordshire Light Infantry and Latin Light Infantry were only the territorial units here. We never had a regular battalion, which is quite interesting and actually quite unique for the area. In the museum, we cover everything from the early days, the 36th of foot, all the way up to the Light Infantry and its latter disbandment. So starting off in our first uh, cabinet, we cover the 36th of foot, the Herefordshire Militia, and the early rifle volunteers. Now a lot of this was brought around with the threat in Europe, the increasing war, war footing of Napoleon, so naturally units were created in local counties to counteract that, that being the militia. Uh, so we covered some, we got some, some fantastic items here covering the early militia uniform on the far left hand side, some of the early crockery and mess items, moving along to more the ceremonial items and lastly the grey uniform of the rifle volunteers. Moving on to this middle cabinet, we're covering the now formalised Herefordshire Rifle Volunteers. And specifically, we look at the Rifle Volunteers during the Boer War. Now, as we know, the Boer War in South Africa involved lots of many units, but the requirement for manpower was so great that the call-out went to form volunteer service companies from territorial units, or as at the time, the Rifle Volunteers. Herefordshire provided two volunteer service companies in support of our mother unit, as it were, the King Shropshire Light Infantry. And some interesting items here going from the Oliver Patton water bottle to a cigarette case that's been made out of a chocolate box, but also the two uniforms on your left hand side. Interestingly enough, these were only recovered a few years ago from a theatrical company costume department, but they're very interesting, rare survivors of volunteer Herefordian unit uniforms. In 1908, the Units like the militia and the rifle volunteers were brought under one banner, as it were, and it was known, that was known as the Territorial Army. Now Herefordshire was naturally called the Herefordshire Regiment, with its base here in, in, in the actual city of Hereford. So we cover that on the left-hand side of the cabinet, with the formation and the, the new uniform and insignia. But latterly, we're covering the first great bloodening of the regiment. Now, being territorial, it stayed in the UK at the beginning of the First World War. But it was sent in that terrible campaign, the Damned Dardanelles, and the regiment's first bloodening was on the land, the beaches of Suvla Bay in Gallipoli, which the name is now carried on forward into the barracks room. Now, interestingly, the insignia in front of you, as you can see in the top right, you can see a T Herefordshire. Now, this was the standard insignia given to the regiment, but at the formation of the First World War and the formation of a second battalion due to the influx of men, the old and bold originals didn't like this fact. So, on the orders of their officer, they cut down their T's to form one, thus indicating that they were the first and original battalion. Now, one of the stars of the museum collection is this medal group you can see in front of you. And as you can see, it's quite an impressive rack of medals covering two world wars. This is the medal group belonging to Lieutenant Colonel Wilkins Fitzwilliam Chip. And as you can see, he's got his Distinguished Service Order and Bar, the OBE and the Military Cross. Now, Chip is a really interesting character. He joined the regiment in 1899 as a private and finally left the army in 1956 as a lieutenant colonel. But in between that, he landed at Gallipoli in 1915 with the 1st Battalion as company sergeant major and was promoted on the beaches. Towards the end of the First World War, he was actually in command of the battalion at various times in France and Flanders and thus awarded the military cross and his two distinguished service orders, which when you take into consideration, was mainly awarded to senior officers for long service and for meritorious service. It's quite impressive for a company sergeant major to be awarded. But interestingly, is his Second World War service. Now you look at that and you see he's got the Pacific Star, which is odd because most Herefordians got the France and Germany Star. In 1941, Chip was in Singapore and at the time part of the Malay Forestry Commission, but also part of the Royal Air Force Observer Corps. And at the fall of Singapore in 41, he sadly was taken as a prisoner of war and held in Changi Prison until 1945. 
which is quite interesting because he must have hidden the fact he was still serving at the time to be kept in the Changi prison, which he acted as a librarian. In 1945, on release from Changi, he had a special permit to go back into the wreck of Singapore, where, in 1941, knowing the Japanese were inbound, he'd hidden his First World War medals and orders in the snake vivarium of the Raffles Museum. So he was quite lucky to find them after nearly five years in the, in the bag of the Japanese. But an interesting chap and well worthy of reading his complete service record. in front of you have obviously come from the dark days of World War II, but the story behind them is absolutely fantastic. They're actually the staff car pennants of the last Fuhrer of the Third Reich. And no, that wasn't Hitler, that was Grand Admiral Dönitz, his deputy. And these were taken into safe custody by the regiment on the capture of Dönitz and his puppet government in Flensburg. And it's one of the prizes of the regiment at the end of the war. Dernitz's staff bat baton is currently in the Shropshire Regimental Museum as the gold lineage of the Herefords and Shropshires we shared items around us. So guys, as you see here behind me, we have the Cold War stuff or the uh, banner as some of you know it as the channel or from the channel. The Herefordshires did not have a permanent or a regular unit. They were all um, TA or reservist units. Um, so this is unusual, the fact that they have an Northern Ireland set up because very, very few of them would have actually served in Northern Ireland. And then here, interestingly enough, you have a gentleman that has served in Korea. Right, so guys, that's a brief look at the museum. Uh, if you are in the area, I would recommend to come see it, but it is enclosed, so you'll have to get onto this chap to open it up. You'll have to get onto Danny to open it up. I will leave uh, an email for the museum and the top of the video description as always, and I will always leave a email for my own channel. Now, small little museums like this, lads, they depend on the public, so if you have anything with, to do with this regiment, or anything to do with the history of this regiment, please notify the lads, because that stuff needs to be recorded. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.